The blue economy is a fresh, creative, uh, practical way of looking at how we can finally develop the territories in which we're living. We had this idea of the green economy, but in the green economy, everything that is good for you and good for nature is expensive. That means it's for the rich, it's not possible. We need to have an economy where we use what we have, we generate value, and we respond to the needs of people. That economy, I call it blue, but if people don't like the color blue, they can change the color, it doesn't make any difference to me. But the key is that we start implementing the generation of value with available resources. Many people ask the question, how is it possible that it can be cheaper? It's smaller volume, it is new, it isn't so well known yet, so the cost must be higher. It's true. If you calculate like the old traditional economists, then you may conclude it's higher. But new economics prescribes that we must operate our business as if we are an ecosystem in nature. You know, in nature, a tree is never there only to be the tree. The tree is, of course, also providing a lot of support for fungus, for earthworms, for bacteria, for mushrooms. You know, it is quite amazing how ecosystems work and always you have multiple benefits. So my inspiration is nature. And in nature, we know that there are always multiple sources and multiple results. So what I'm proposing is that if you're drinking a cup of coffee, you have your espresso, then the waste of the coffee can immediately be used to farm a mushroom. Two weeks later, you harvest your mushrooms. And after harvesting your mushrooms, you have an excellent feed for your chickens. And they will lay eggs. So instead of having one income, one cash flow, we're having four cash flows. And that is the way we succeed in making things cheaper. Cheaper means you have more revenues and therefore, what is even more interesting, you have less risk. Unless we have a renaissance in policy making, we're going to see more of the same politics that are always trying to manage to the best of their abilities in the fringes. That means fundamentally nothing changes. We need policy makers who have the guts, who have the courage, who have the clarity that we need to transform. That doesn't mean we have to declare a revolution and become Che Guevara's. That means that we need to focus on the action we can take facilitating the initiatives that are truly transforming. And of course, it's very difficult within traditional politics, and it's very difficult within the traditional lobbying. And therefore, sometimes we need to be disruptive. And disruption means that we all go on to sit up and think and realize that there must be a better way. I always remind people of the beautiful words of a French philosopher, René Char. René Char said, in French, Celui qui vient au monde pour ne rien troubler ne mérite ni regard ni patience. The one who comes to the world and causes no trouble does not deserve any patience or appreciation. And I think this is what we're in need of. We need people who do cause sufficient levels of trouble so that the whole system starts thinking about what could we really do much better.